Hello and welcome to the Cloud Church. I'm Robert Breaker, missionary evangelist to the Spanish and English speaking people. And today I've got a very important and interesting message for you. It's something that I've lately learned about. It's something that I think we might have mentioned in Bible school and gone over, but we passed over quickly and it's something that I never really got together in my head until now. And I've heard some people lately talking about this. And in fact, this is something that new versions of the Bible change and completely obliterate and take out, which is very sad because this is an awesome doctrine. It is the difference between the faith of Christ to the faith in Christ. New versions of the Bible, every time it says faith of Christ, they change that to faith in Christ. And when they do, they lose this doctrine, a doctrine which I really hope will be a blessing to you. As I studied this out the last several days, I just started getting goosebumps. It is just incredible. It is amazing to me how awesome the Word of God is and how horrible, how horrible it is to change the Scriptures and get a new version of the Bible that just says, well, we think faith of Christ is really faith in Christ, so we'll just change the Word without even thinking. And how horrible, how horrible that is to completely obliterate this doctrine of the difference in the faith of Christ and the faith in Christ. So let's start with Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 8. And I hope this will be an encouragement to you. It's really encouraged me and strengthened me as well. Romans 1 8 says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. The Apostle Paul is speaking, and he's speaking to the Romans here the saved Christians in Rome, and he says, your faith is spoken of throughout in the entire world. Everyone is talking about what your faith is. Well, what is your faith? Well, he's talking about their faith in, A-I-T-H, their faith in Christ. So our faith should be this faith here. We should be believing in Christ. What is the faith in in Christ. Well, let's look at that first. What does it mean to believe in Christ? Well, it means to trust Jesus Christ. What is the Christian faith? Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15. We've got a lot of Bible verses to cover. And I believe this, this teaching will be interesting to me. Like I said earlier, a lot of men that my dad knew and a lot of preachers lately have been mentioning, well, don't you see the difference between the faith of Christ and the faith in Christ? And I'll be honest, I never really saw the difference until now, and now I really see what they were trying to say, and it's been a, it's been a real blessing to see the difference. So Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15 says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. So Paul is saying, I heard of your faith. You see, the faith in Christ is our faith, and our faith must be in Christ. Let's look at Colossians 1.4 as well. Colossians 1 and verse 4. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. So the your faith is our faith. What our faith should be in. And it's our faith should be faith in Christ Jesus. And so Colossians 1 and 4. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which ye have to all saints. So we see what the faith is that was spread about in the time of Christ. Or, or the time of Paul. It was the Christian faith, which was your faith in Christ. Let's go to uh, the place where I always like to go, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Let me just show you what it means to believe in Christ. This is a gospel verse, uh, of the gospel, excuse me, this is the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Shame on you if you don't know the gospel, because the gospel in the Bible has five parts. Christ died... For our sins, and I put the number four there, excuse me. For our sins, he was buried. He rose again. And then it's according to the scriptures. All right, according to the scriptures. So, the gospel is that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again, according to the scriptures. Five parts of the gospel. And I'll go ahead and read it quickly. Verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein you stand, by which ye are saved. So we are saved by our faith in Christ. We are saved by the gospel, by which ye are saved. Okay? And then it says... 
unless you, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. So this is what our faith as Christians should be in. This is the Gospel. Alright, and you've probably heard this if you've listened to this before, but somebody might be listening to this for the first time. Very important to know what the Gospel is. The Christian faith is faith in Christ, but not just in who He is, but faith in what He's done when He died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now let's look at this. Um, I'll quote quickly Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. But you can be turning there as well, because I'm going to read chapter 3 as well. But <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 say, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that it is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, it's faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in His finished work. For by grace, through faith, are we saved. Ephesians 3, 17. That Christ, Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. So, Christ dwells in your heart by faith. So clearly the Christian faith is faith in Christ. Faith in His finished work on Calvary when Jesus died for our sins. And I'll put the cross right here for you. And you know, here we have Jesus. and This is the church age and the raptures over here and the tribulation. And then the millennial kingdom. And here is Armageddon. I like to draw this out. It's always good. So, here we are in the church age here, this time period. Church age. And we are saved by what? By faith in Jesus Christ and what He's done for us. More verses on this. This is so important because there are actually whole denominations out there today that don't believe that salvation is by faith. They believe you have to work your way to heaven. Well, what does the Bible say? Over and over and over and over again, it talks about faith in Christ, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.16. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that as man is not justified, listen to this, a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh-oh, here we have something different. We're not saved by faith in Christ, but faith of Christ. And we'll get to that in a minute. We'll come back to this verse. But look at what the rest of the verse says. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. So you have a difference between the faith of Jesus and the faith in Jesus. How interesting. That we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So we're not saved by works. We're saved by the finished work. By what Jesus Christ has done for us. Look at Galatians 3.26. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So we become saved, or Christians, by faith in Christ Jesus, trusting in the gospel, trusting in his finished work. Galatians 3.22 is another one. And in Galatians 3.22, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Oh, here we go. We're going to look at that verse again. I'm going to show you all the verses where it mentions the faith of Christ. But right now, let's look at some more verses of faith in Christ. Because they are two different things. And as I mentioned earlier, new versions of the Bible take out faith of Christ. Do they affect doctrine when they do so? I'll let you be the judge. But every time it says faith of Christ in the King James Bible, they completely take that out and change it to faith in Christ. Should they have done that? Hmm, let's see. All right, let's look at some more verses. 2 Timothy 3.15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. What an interesting teaching this is when we get to it. So, 2 Timothy 3.15. And we here have Paul speaking to Timothy. And it says, and that, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So faith is... In Christ Jesus, our trust is in what He's done for us, His finished work, the gospel. Romans 3, 28. <clears throat> Romans 3, 28. As I said earlier, many people think, oh, you've got to work your way to heaven, work your way to heaven. I don't see how. As you read through the scriptures, it's faith in Christ, faith in what He's done. 
Romans 3.28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in what he's done for us on the cross of Calvary. Romans 5.9, or excuse me, 5.1. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace through God, or with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This was the verse that Martin Luther read that showed him, Hey, I'm not saved by works, I'm saved by faith. And that kicked off the whole Reformation. And people began to see, hey, salvation is by faith. It's not by what we do. It's by trusting the gospel, which is what Jesus did for us. Now, Hebrews 11. Do you get what I'm trying to present here today? That it's all about faith. And how important is faith? For without faith, we can't be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. So this faith is the saving medium that saves us. But the faith saves us only when our faith is in the right thing. Our faith must be in the gospel, in what Jesus did. Hebrews 11.6 tells us, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So without faith it is impossible to please God. So God demands faith for salvation. And he demands that faith be in the gospel, in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Be in what Jesus did for us. So the gospel is a did gospel. Through Jesus, it's done. And all we have to do is believe. Now there's another gospel out there, which is the do gospel. It's the works gospel. It says, oh, you've got to do these things to get to heaven. And you know what that works gospel does? It comes to the cross and it says, that's meaningless. The cross means nothing. It's all about me. I can get to heaven on my own. Me, 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 me. I, 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 I. And God says, fooey on that. Because you cannot get to heaven and wash your sins away by yourself. You must come through Christ and faith in Christ, his finished work. Trust what he's done. This is a false gospel. You cannot work your way to heaven. Now, with that stated, faith in what? What should our faith be in? Well, I've mentioned in the gospel. But let me make it a little more specific. Romans 3.25. I've told you before my testimony that this is the verse I got saved reading. So Romans chapter 3 and verse 25 says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, that means like a substitute, through faith in his blood. And if we've looked through my... Uh, one of my first sermons on the gospel, we saw how all throughout the gospel we find the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't preach the gospel without preaching the blood. Christ died for our sins. He shed his blood. Our sins be as scarlet, they be as crimson. Sin is the color of red. He was buried in the same ground that his blood dropped into. And the Bible says his blood crawled out to God just like Abel's blood called out to God. Jesus Christ rose again, and what did he do? He took his blood up into the mercy seat in heaven. He did it according to the scriptures. And according to the scriptures, God demanded a blood atonement for sin. And we find out that Jesus Christ was the bloody Lamb of God who shed his blood for our sins. So salvation, therefore, is by faith in his what? shed blood. It's trusting Him as our blood atonement. It's trusting what He's done to save us. That is our faith. That's what we trust in to get to heaven. We must trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ and His shed blood, the gospel. That's how we're saved. So, what is the faith of Christ? If this is our faith, the faith in Christ that saves us, then what is the faith of Christ? Well, that's his faith. You say, his faith? Jesus had faith? He sure did. That's what the faith of Christ means. It's talking about Christ's faith. Well, what was Jesus Christ's faith in? Let's start. Three different places here. There's actually three verses, or three times in the Bible, where it uses the term, faith of Jesus Christ. 
All right, I want to make sure that you understand, because there's other two verses that talk about faith of Christ. But there's only three times in the Bible that says exactly like this, the faith of Jesus Christ. Three times, if you were to look at a search engine, it would say faith of Jesus Christ. Three verses would pop up, and I'm going to show you those three verses. The first one is Romans chapter 3, and verse 22. It says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So it says the faith of Jesus Christ. And it says that the faith of Christ is to all of those who believe. So those who believe have faith in Christ. But what is offered is the faith of Christ. What does that mean? That's, that's interesting. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16 for the second occurrence. Galatians 2.16, and I believe this will be a very short sermon today. But it will be, be great because a lot of times I go long, <laughs> very long. But uh, I really do try to get my sermons about 30 minutes, but sometimes they're an hour. I've done well if I do 50 minutes sometimes. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Excuse me. Galatians 2.16. I'm in 3.16. Okay. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Now, I've read this verse earlier, and I wanted to stress from it that salvation was by faith, not by works. But look what it says here. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed. So when we believe, we had faith in Christ. But it says that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. So twice this verse talks about we are justified by the faith of Christ. Justification or salvation. Now there are other verses that say we're justified by faith, and that's by our faith. But this verse twice said we're justified by the faith of Christ. So we aren't just justified by our faith, we're justified by God's faith. What an interesting thing to think about, that justification and salvation isn't just through our faith and our believing, it was through Jesus believing as well. That's what this is teaching. That's what this verse is saying. That we're justified by our faith through His faith. It's by His faith as well as our faith. Interesting. Okay, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 22. The third occurrence of the term faith of Jesus Christ. So, Galatians 3.22. And it says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So the promise by faith of Jesus Christ. The promise which comes through Jesus' faith is given to us who have faith in Him. So over and over we're seeing a difference and a contrast between Jesus' faith and our faith. Well, we get it. We understand what our faith has to be in to be saved. What was Jesus' faith in? What is that? You use the new version of the Bible, you're totally going to lose this. And I guarantee if you'll hang in there, this is worth listening to. This is amazing. Galatians 2.20. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. A verse that I'm sure you're familiar with. It says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, in the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. All right. Notice, it doesn't say faith of Jesus Christ. So I showed you the three places where the King James Bible says faith of Jesus Christ. But here, it calls it the faith of the Son of God. Who is the Son of God? Well, of course, that's Jesus. So this is the faith of Jesus Christ. So it says, I live, yet not I. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul says, I'm not just trusting in him by my faith. He said, I'm living my life based on his faith. It's the faith of the Son of God. I've read that verse many times, and I've always thought the faith of the Son of God, well, that's my faith in the Son of God. But it's saying the faith of the Son of God. He's living because of his faith. He's trusting in Him 
but because he trusted first in something, he's living for him. Interesting. What does this mean? Let's go to Philippians. We'll tie it all together. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 9. Philippians 3, 9. Talking about the faith in Christ versus the faith of Christ. Philippians 3, 9 says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I might win Christ. You know what dung is, don't you? Paul said, Everything means to me as much as poop, to be nice, to be, to, as, as, uh, as, it, well, that's what everything, as far as I'm concerned, is like. To, for me to trust in what I've done is for me to trust in poop if you want it straight and to the point. <laughs> he says, my own righteousness is about as valuable as dung. That's why I want Jesus Christ. But look at verse 9. And be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. He just tells you two different faiths in that verse. You have the righteousness which is of God by faith. That's my faith. When I trust Him, God makes me righteous. But He says, but that which is through the faith of Christ. So, I am made righteous by my faith, but also by His faith. That's what the verse is saying. What is this? What is Jesus' faith in? What is this talking about? Well, let's see if we can get this together. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, we're right there in 3, let's turn over to 2. Philippians 2, I'm going to read verse 5 through 11. And let's think about this. I live over here in the church age, so when I believed, my faith was right here on what Jesus did when he died, was buried down here in the earth, then he rose again. I'm trusting in all that he's done for me back here. Well, Jesus lived back over here and died here. So what was Jesus' faith in? What was Jesus thinking before he died on the cross? Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 through 11. Let's read this together. Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. So we should think like this. And how should we think? We should think the way that Jesus thinks. So he's asking us to look at the mindset of Jesus Christ and think the way Jesus is thinking. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took unto him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient, to, obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and of things in earth, and things under the earth, and at the name, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So what we're reading here is about the mindset of Jesus. And Jesus came to die. And he knew he was going to die. But what is the mindset of Jesus? He humbled himself obedient unto death. Now Jesus knew he was God. So Jesus had faith that he would go to the cross and die. Jesus believed that he would do it. That was his faith. It was in his death. Wow, the faith of Christ. Christ's faith was in the fact that he was going to die for you and me. Look at this. Um, Jesus believed he was going to die for then for you and us, and that he would be exalted for it. That his death would do something. Well, we look back and we say, oh, that death is for the blood atonement, his death, burial, resurrection. That's what gives us redemption. That's what saves us. Well, Jesus, here he is, looking forward. And if you'll excuse Jesus as a stick figure, he's looking forward to what he was going to do. And he knew that what he was going to do was to be for you and I. Let's look at Matthew chapter 26. So Jesus was trusting in his death that it would be sufficient to save us. He knew it. Now Matthew chapter 26. 
even before it happened, he believed that it would be sufficient and that it would take care of our sin debt. So we have the death. Well, did Jesus also talk about his burial? You see where I'm going with this? We believe the gospel. Jesus believed the gospel before it even took place because he knew it would take place. And he knew that it would be what would save us. Matthew 26, 12. Jesus is here, and he says, For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Jesus knew before it took place that he was going to die and be buried. Verse 20. Uh, 26 and verse 20. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And I um, don't know what verse I was looking for there. Oh, verse 28. And he says in verse 28, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But look at verse 26. That's the verse I wanted. It was 26. He says, this is my what? Body. Take, eat. This is my body. So Jesus was offering up his body and his blood before it even happened. He was trusting that what I'm going to do and I'm about to do on the cross will be sufficient and will be all that's necessary to save mankind. Wow. Uh, let's look at Mark 14. Jesus mentions his death and his burial before he even dies. Mark chapter 14 and verse 8. Mark 14, 8. She had done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Jesus knew there would be a burial. Mark, uh, Luke 22, 19. Luke 22, 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. He knew they needed to realize he's offering his body as a sacrifice for their sins. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 16 again. Uh, actually, Matthew again, but this time in chapter 16. Matthew 16, 21. Jesus Christ talks about the resurrection. You think Jesus knew that he was going to be resurrected on that cross? I mean, when he died on that cross? He sure did. That's what his faith was in. His faith was in the exact thing that our faith should be in. Only he believed it before it happened because he knew he had to do it. And he knew if he did die, and he knew if he was buried, that he would rise again. He had faith that that would happen, and we will see that. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Boy, I'm getting goosebumps all over again, man. It's a blessing to know what God knew before he died. That what he was doing, he was trusting that when I do this, I will rise again. Luke 16, or excuse me, Matthew 16, 21. From that time forward, excuse me, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed... He died and rise again. Look what it says. And be raised again the third day. Jesus knew he would be risen again. He would rise again. 1723. 1723. And they shall kill him. And the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. Jesus is talking about himself in the third person. Matthew 20 verse 19. And they shall deliver him. Who? Jesus. Jesus to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. So Jesus knew, hey, I'm going to have to die, and I have faith to believe that my death is sufficient to save all mankind if they will just believe. It's my faith that led to this. Now it's their faith that makes them saved, is what Jesus says. Let's go to Matthew. Oh, excuse me, let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3, verse 7 through 10. Now watch this. This is Paul speaking in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. In Philippians 3, 7 begins, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. This is the verse we read earlier about the dung. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Now look at verse 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, 
<laughs> He's talking about this faith that Jesus had before he died. He said, which is of God by faith. We receive that faith. We receive. See, our faith is in what Jesus' faith was in. The gospel. It's, but he was trusting that he would do it, and by doing it he would rise again, and it would be all it takes and all necessary to save us. After he's done it, we see his faith. Now we put our faith in what he's done for us. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. The power of his resurrection. God knew that he had power before he died to rise again. And his faith was, hey, I will do this and I know I will raise again. God knew what he was about to do and he knew that when he did it, he would rise again from the dead. Incredible. Let's look at this. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, I want to read about Abraham. Abraham did something years ago. and he, he, If you know the story of Abraham, you know that God back here in the Old Testament, let me erase this and write this out real quick. God back here in the Old Testament told Abraham, Take your son, your only son Isaac, and offer him on this altar over here. And so he did. He believed to God. And God said, now Abraham, take this knife. And he said, you're going to take this knife. He said, you're going to kill your son, your only son Isaac. And the Bible says he was willing to do that, and he had his hands ready, and God stopped him and said, don't do it. I just wanted to see if you love me enough to follow through with it. And we all know that story about Abraham. I believe it's in Genesis 22, if I, if I remember correctly. I don't want to give you the wrong verse. Let me just check that real quick. Genesis chapter 22. When it's talking about this, and we... Yep, exactly. Genesis chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. So take now thy son Isaac, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and give to the land of Moriah. And it says, offer him to me as an offering. <laughs> Look at verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. Wow. Over here something happened on the third day. What was it? Jesus rose again on the third day. But back here in Genesis 22... Abraham did what God told him to do. And everyone to this day remembers Abraham's faith. And we're about to read in Hebrews chapter 11 about the faith of Abraham. What was his faith? Look at this. Hebrews 11:17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, his only begotten son, just like Jesus offered up himself, his body, the only begotten son of God. And it says here in 17, And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. God told Isaac, This boy is going to be their seed, and your seed is going to be as the sands of the, of the, of the, the grains of sand of the, of the beaches of the sea, and be like the stars in heaven. You'll have so many children from him. And then God goes, Now go kill him. Well, how can you have children from a dead child. So Abraham had faith, and his faith was, I believe that God's going to raise that child from the dead. And we see that right here in verse 18, or 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. The faith of Abraham was so great that he believed that if his only son died, God would raise that son up again and give him life from the dead. Now look over here at Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ is a type of Isaac. And God the Father killed the son, but the son willingly laid himself on the altar. The son willingly died believing that if God takes me and if I die, he will bring me again from the dead, that he will rise again the third day. So what was the faith of Jesus Christ? What was it? It was Jesus believing that his death would be sufficient for all of us. It was Jesus knowing that he was going to be buried, but he believed that when he died, he would rise again. And guess what happened? He arose. 
Up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph over his foes. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He believed in the gospel. <laughs> Jesus was believing in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the faith of Christ. What is our faith? Our faith is the faith in Christ. He trusted this. Why don't we trust it? You see, if you're lost, you don't have the faith of Christ or the faith in Christ. And what's interesting to me is the faith of Christ is in the same exact thing that our faith is supposed to be in. That his death, burial, and resurrection would be sufficient to wash our sins away and give us eternal life. So let's look at these three verses one more time. Um, well, let's look at three more verses and then we'll close. And look at where it talks about the faith of Christ. Five times all total does it talk about the faith of Jesus or the faith of God or the faith of Christ. Three times it says, literally, faith of Jesus Christ. That shows up three times. But there's another two times. Once it says the faith of God. And I believe the other was the faith of the Son of God or the faith of, of Christ. So, Romans chapter 3 and verse 22 again. Do you see it? I got a kick out of this study and I was a, it was a blessing to learn that what Jesus was believing in before he died. And guess what? That's what we need to believe in after he died. Jesus was trusting that he would do it and that it would be sufficient and that he would rise again. Now we look back and we have to trust in what he's done, believe it is sufficient to save us and take us to heaven. And when we trust that, then we're trusting the faith of Christ. We're trusting in Christ, our faith in Christ. Romans 3.22 Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, Unto all and upon all them that believe, there, there is no difference. So the righteousness of God is by the faith of Jesus. Because Jesus went through with this, he made a way for us sinners to be made righteous. So the way is made through the faith of Christ to obtain righteousness. But until your faith is in this, you're not righteous. Does that make sense? So in the mind of Jesus, in the mind of God, everything's done for man to be righteous. All that lacks is man to believe in the faith of Christ. Romans 3.22 Now let's look at Galatians 2.16 Well, the more I think about it, the more amazing it is to think about His faith. If you want to have the mind of Christ and you want to believe like God wants you to, then you need to trust the gospel because that's what Jesus Christ was trusting. That what he did was sufficient. That what he would do would be sufficient. But it's done. And he was trusting that when it's done, it's done. It's a done gospel. Now just believe. Galatians 2.16. Read this earlier. Love this verse. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. This verse is talking about the faith of Christ, and God, or Christ, is saying you're justified by what He's done. Before He even did it, Jesus believed that it would be all that's necessary to justify you. So as far as God's concerned, justification is done. But until you have your faith in this, you still don't have the justification. Faith is what seals the deal. Faith is what receives it. Jesus sealed the deal. Faith is what helps or makes you receive it. Last verse, Galatians 3.22. Galatians 3.22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus, Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Once again, the divider, the faith of Jesus Christ, the faith of Christ. Receive it by faith. So Jesus had faith to do this. Now your faith must be in this to receive salvation. How about it? Are you saved? Jesus' faith was in his death, burial, and resurrection. Is yours? We've looked at the verses. we looked at the gospel. we looked at salvation by faith. The question is, what's your faith in? Jesus' faith was in the same thing our faith is supposed to be in today. So what is your faith in today? Jesus did everything necessary to save you. 
And his faith was in the fact that what he would do would be all that's needed to be done. Every sin, past, present, and future. Now the question is, will you receive that by faith? Jesus paid it all. All to him I own. Sin had left a crimson stain, but Jesus washed the white of snow. If you're lost, today's a good day to get saved. We've done everything we can to show you that salvation is by grace through faith. It's trusting in what Jesus did. Why don't you get saved today? If you are saved, and this has been as much of an encouragement to you as it has been to me, why don't you write to me? It's amazing, the faith of Christ. That has new meaning to me now. When I read through the scriptures and I read of the faith of Christ, now I know what it's talking about. He was trusting that he would do it, and that it would be all that's necessary to save us. And now I know I trust that. I'm not trusting in what I do. I trust what he's done for me. And I know I'm safe. If you're a pastor or a missionary or Sunday school teacher, how about have a Bible school class on this? A uh, Sunday school class. How about teaching this in Sunday school? It, if it strengthens your faith, then obviously it'll strengthen someone's el someone else's. And i just love to, to see more people understand. And finally, if you have a new version of the Bible... And you've fallen through this study, and you saw that they changed faith of Christ to faith in Christ. Time to get rid of that Bible. Get back to the King James 1611 authorized version. Amen. Thank you for watching today. God bless.